Billy Balls, my friends. Big news coming in for you guys here on YouTube. In case you haven't heard, Tryon Worlds has been bought out by Game Mingo. Uh, so in this video, what I'd like to do is I would like to talk about that, take a look at what that means for my friends who are still playing Arc Age. However, this information should pertain to about everybody who plays any of the Tryon World games, whether that's Trove, Defiance, Rift, or even Atlas Reactor. So let's go. For those of you who play Arcage or any of the Tryon World games, you know that Tryon has taken some pretty big lumps over these past few years with some bad decisions and generally, well, I'm just going to say it, some pretty shitty marketing tactics. Tryon had some good games, some big releases, and provided thousands, if not millions, of hours of enjoyment for many of us out here. Uh, you know, collectively millions of hours. Rift was huge, Defiance was big, and Arc Age probably could have broke some records if it had not been for, well, Tryon. Things have actually gotten pretty bad at Tryon lately. We had some people quit, then we had another round of layoffs, and now we have this buyout coming from Game Mingo. You may actually be thinking this is a good thing, but I'm not quite so sure about that. Game Mango doesn't really look like it's got a great relationship with its customers. And from what I've seen, and many of uh, their employees are not happy uh, about their situation there either. Uh, so let's break this down with what we know at this very moment in time. So on October 22nd, 2018, Tryon's Community Relations Manager, this is the manager of the community managers, the top dog, Brass, announced that Tryon is going to be purchased by Game Mingo. This is going to turn out to be the last day for many of the employees there as Game Mingo brings its staff to replace or fill the roles of those who are getting outed. Of course, many of the Tryon employees will remain. They almost have to as most games like Rift and Trove as well as Defiance, they were actually developed by Tryon themselves. And who better to work on such titles as those who have made them? Then you have my game, Arcade, which is extremely intricate and ever-changing. Anybody new coming in this, to this game is going to have a very, very hard time getting up to speed, let alone uh, be on a pace to work ahead on future content. It looks like Brass is also one of those who is getting outed, leaving the Arc Age community manager role. Once again, she stepped in to fill that uh, when our last one left. Now, for those of you who are keeping track, that is that means that Arc Age is going to be up for the fifth community manager in only four years. And like I said earlier, if you don't play Arc Age, it's going to take you like a year to even figure out what the hell you're doing. Uh, I wonder who could even begin to fill that role. Hmm. When you consider a game like Arc Age and its dynamic nature, a person coming into this one cold, like I said, would take at least a year to get up to speed. This is at a time in Arc Age's history where not only are things changing like at a crazy pace, uh, but we just got through a huge server merge affecting almost every single server, and we have a huge update slated very soon to bring us Arc Age version 5.0. This job is going to be tough to fill even for a seasoned community manager. Good luck whoever you are. Now let's take a look at Game Mingo and their track record and titles. If you head over to Game Mingo's website, you'll see a bunch of free-to-play titles. And to me, that isn't really a good sign. But then again, Tryon's portfolio pretty much only contains free-to-play titles too, unless you count Rift Prime. The problem I have with free-to-play titles is that it opens the door for shitty marketing tactics, and that seems like something that Game Mingo is no stranger to. In fact, one could draw a lot of similarities between Game Mingo and Tryon Worlds in this regard. 
What will be interesting to see how it plays out is how Game Mingo handles the relationship with XL Games, who is Arcage's actual developer there in Korea. Those who are not familiar with Arcage, you will know that Tryon has had a struggling relationship, or at least what appears to be a struggling relationship with XL Games on their own. Now, my biggest concern with Game Mingo, aside from the free-to-play model that they employ, is they don't really have a great reputation with their employees. If you check what other people say about working at Game Mingo on a site like Glassdoor.com, it doesn't look well for those at Tryon who are left. Additionally, info can be gleaned by noting that Game Mingo purchased Aria games back in 2016, and if you look at what people say about Aria games on Glassdoor.com, you will see that the reviews were really good up until they were purchased by Game Mingo. However, as I stated earlier, Tryon was already hemorrhaging employees through these people that either quit or those that were laid off, so it may not be much of a change in culture for those who are left. That is to say, those who are left may be able to put up with more management bullshit than those who are not. Still, I can't really go around bashing Game Mingo completely because whatever they're doing has allowed them to accumulate or raise enough capital to buy Tryon Worlds. They must have really figured out how to monopolize on this free-to-play monetization model that is currently plaguing the gaming market, in my opinion. Uh, one of my biggest fears in all of this at this time is that uh, I, I never really up until today have heard of Game Mingo or even any of the titles that they have. Uh, I was further dismayed when I realized that they have never properly monetized a game without gambling and pay to win type mechanics. Perhaps that statement alone is what attracted them to try on worlds because Arcage itself is probably the first example of a pay to win game anybody in the MMO genre would point to and say, oh, that. So to my Arcage friends, I did state that I wouldn't be coming back unless something big happened. <laughs> What's funny, when I made that statement, I was actually thinking more in the lines of XL, changing the game to be more player-friendly and less pay-to-win-y, and or Arcage opening a non-pay-to-win server, like we've been promised a million times, where, in fact, only cosmetics could be purchased from the marketplace. I actually had no thoughts whatsoever of Tryon actually getting bought out themselves. If you remember, it wasn't but only like, what, four months ago when the news broke that Tryon had purchased Gazillion? Uh, in, <laughs> in context, how does Tryon buying Gazillion make any sense if they were going to be purchased by another company themselves shortly thereafter? I really don't have any answer to that. But I do have a thought. Scott Hartsman, the CEO of Tryon, uh, said that when they bought Gazillion, that what they were intending to do was focus on supporting infrastructure for online games for developers and publisher. Which kind of means like, screw it, we're done dealing with retail customers. What we really want to do is help the businesses who want to deal with those customers. We don't. They want to work on the infrastructure and not the actual games themselves. And so I did mention Scott Hartsman, and I want to continue that thought. Um, I actually like the guy. Well, the best I can like him without ever having met him. Um, I did get to spend a little time playing one of their games, Atlas Reactor. He was one of my teammates for a couple matches. That was cool. Uh, I also have been following him on Twitter, and in general, I do like the things that he tweets about. He seems to have a lot of those gamer-type qualities, but he's also a pretty shrewd businessman, and that should be obvious by his position of CEO. In general, it seemed like he really wants the best for his employees, but he wasn't afraid to make some hard decisions if need be. He seems to be able to look past the nobility of sacrifice and save those who he can. He has tweeted about the following things that I have really liked. He's tweeted about working conditions for developers and equal pay for females. That gets a lot of points for me. Okay, so why now? 
Did the Gazillion buyout not have the desired effect of helping Tryon? Or was the purchase of Tryon simply the sale of the Tryon titles, not necessarily the infrastructure like that which is given to us by Glyph? Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. As of yet, I haven't seen Scott comment about any of this on Twitter, but I would love to see him say something or even speak with him about this matter. All right, so final thoughts. Well, I imagine many of my gamer friends uh, that are playing Tryon games are a little bit worried right now. I actually get that. I truly, truly do. However, we also don't really have the full details of what is going on yet and how bad or good Game Mingo will be. Their history doesn't look great, but then again, Tryon's name was tarnished pretty bad already. Now, Game Mingo at least has a large pro portfolio, and that could mean a significant boost in players of many of Tryon titles once they get fully integrated into that platform. That actually may prove to be the single best part of this whole announcement. As it already stood, I don't think Tryon could have attracted many new players to any of their game titles without something big like this happening. That said, Gamingos only seem to know how to run free-to-play games at a time when I feel like gamers are really getting fed up with free-to-play games and their shitty tactics. The question is, did Gamingo just buy the titles to milk them even harder? Do they have the ability to monetize games in a traditional sense? And are they flexible and willing to make big decisions for the benefit of the gamers? Or is this only going to be about the bottom line? Well, I don't have any answers to those questions, but I am going to follow this matter very closely. I encourage you to jump in my Discord, uh, as many of you already still are there from Mark Age, and uh, ask. You know, I'm following this very closely, so please, if you know something that I don't, come talk to me. Uh, I also want to say to those left at Tryon, that is the Tryon employees, keep your chins up. Things could actually get better. And remember that even if gamers are a bunch of complaining little biatches, we still enjoy the hell out of your games. Those who are left are going to be our last vestiges of remembrance in how much fun we had. And you guys are the ones that will know how much we really, really appreciate what you have done. So for that I will say to those that are left, thank you. Until next time, this is Arid saying, be well.